Okay, we need a goat milking stand because we've got goats and milk now. And we need a stand that we can hand milk some mini jerseys on. So we're going to try to make a dual purpose stand that we can put the mini jerseys and goats on and milk. And that's your plan for the day. That's my plan. And then my plan. What's your plan, Heather? Uh, I got all kinds of goodness. I'm gonna plant onions. And these started growing in the kitchen, so I thought I'd make like an onion patch that will grow back every year. So, cause I did that in Utah, I had an onion patch. So, every time we need onions, we just walk out and pick up onions. So I'm gonna do an onion patch from these small tears to get out of the kitchen. Now, let's plant these little guys. So, yeah, I'm gonna be in the garden. So, yeah. It'll be a salsa garden. Yeah, we like salsa and guacamole at our house. So anyways, here's the garden. This is the before. Right, you can come back and it's gonna look different. Some of this will be planted. I gotta save some space over there for tomatoes, watermelon, and the warmer weather stuff. Although it's probably warm enough now. I don't think it's gonna freeze anymore. So anyways, yep, and hubby's gonna go mil build a goat milk and stand. And the chicken tractor if he gets time. It has supplies. Okay, that's all. I'm just gonna dig the row for the onions. Um, I put a whole bunch of shavings down because it was really, really crappy, rocky soil. So I put a whole bunch of shavings down for organic material and to help the air get to the onions. And then um, I'm just gonna dig little trenches and I'm gonna bury them about an inch deep. Um, just a little bowl. I'll be spoiled with all the good tools. Perk of being a general contractor is you have lots of tools. <laughs> and they're at my disposal. <laughs> all right, here is the update on the um, goat milking stand slash mini cow milking stand. So I'm speculating on whether or not that's gonna be big enough for a mini cow. Anyways, we made it, what, 30 inches wide and five and a half feet long. and he's gonna put a cover on it. I told him I want to lean to. So if it's raining, I won't have to milk in the rain. Okay, so they've got this little bean trellis we're gonna put up. There's my teenage sons throwing rocks at each other. Such good hard workers. Look at them working so hard. Typical. Anyways, so yeah, we've got lots of plants to plant, so. We're rocking it. You wouldn't know it, but that's probably the hardest they've worked all day. I know, look at him. Brad, you breaking a sweat here? Dylan, building muscles on rocks. All right, we'll come back when we're done for the day. <laughs> oh, and see, I scraped the dirt out of the calf pen. Out of the manure, composted manure hay stuff. So that's what we're using. Because Dad squished it down. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a big long tunnel row thingy and put tomatoes on one side and beans on the other and all the kids are so excited about it. Mm -hmm. 
Especially Dylan, he really likes tomatoes. But he's too cool to admit that, right Dylan? <laughs> Yeah, but cherry tomatoes grow wild here everywhere, so I'm not gonna plant any in the garden. All right, here is our tomato hoop house that these two handsome men just built. Um, talk about how we built it, honey. How we built it? Yeah. Well, we took some 16 foot wire livestock panels and we drove P posts in on the ends to anchor it down. And uh, we tried to make it about six feet tall. I have to duck a little bit, but Heather walks under it nicely. Yeah, he's really, he's 6'4". Um, why did we, why did we plant the tomatoes in the hoop house, honey? Well, we've had a problem in the past, especially here in Missouri, our tomatoes always grow taller than what we have for them to climb. We usually use the panels on their side. Yeah, they get like 10 feet tall. So we thought it'd be fun to see if they'll climb, and if they'll climb over the top, it'd be... Neat. Yeah, so they'll climb in an arch, so then the tomatoes would be easier to harvest, is the thinking we've got here. Have a nice little salsa garden. Yeah, so we're gonna plant some peppers along the other sides, and we'll probably carry it down, because I'll we'll probably do a lot more tomatoes. So I'll probably do like a whole, I don't know, 30, 40 foot row of arched t t tomatoes <laughs> trellis. Well, we'll get some more panels and extend it. Yeah, it's kind of fun, and, and then if it freezes, we can easily cover it too, so. I didn't think that, that'd be nice. Yeah, and I think, and I think it'll help it, you know, kind of like the whole greenhouse effect. I think it'll help with bugs, and when it gets hot out, it'll kind of give it a little bit of shade. The other thing is here in Missouri, sometimes it gets so hot, it'll burn your garden up. Yeah. So we can, kind of, we can cover it, give it a little shade. Yeah, help regulate it, and regulate the water, because that's when we, last year we had a lot of split tomatoes. So this year we can kind of try to regulate how much water they get and how much sun they get and how dried out they get. So this is our little tomato hoop house. So we're excited. We thought of it all by ourselves. Somebody else probably has already thought of it, but this was our creation for the day. Um, It'll be fun. Yep. Something new, different. Brad and his dad and Dylan, they all helped. Got a lot done in the garden today. Got a row planted there. Raised beds are doing good. All right, there is our tomato hoop house. Hey, little girl. You ready to be milked? This one's looking close to having babies too. I'll have to show you the rear view. And there they are. They get snuggled up with the log that I put in here for them in a few weeks when they get bigger you can run around and play on it but just a few more days and we'll have babies from home yeah you're gonna have babies too huh and this one is trying to eat my leash so anyways i'm gonna milk with this goat definitely getting it out of there we're gonna have some babies more babies Oh my heck, this sheep drives me nuts. He is so pushy. I am totally gonna probably put him in the pig pen. I gotta let this go, but I can't because he's gonna try to steal all of the grain. Such a bad sheep. Now he's trying to breed the poor little goat. Larry, go away. Larry, go away. Okay, this is the finished milking stand. Uh, I got sick of waiting on hubby. So, I told him just to put it over here so I could use it. But I can't milk the goat because that lamb won't leave her alone. Get out of here, Larry. Got that side 
windy today. The milking stand is gonna work. Yay! I don't think this stand's big enough for a cow like I hope, but it works great for goats, so that's the important part. It looks like we're gonna have more babies any day. So it's exciting. Maybe I'll have hubby build me another stand for the cows so that I can come out here and milk them sometimes. Sometimes it's just kind of fun. It's good for your soul to go out and build for a cow. Oh my goodness, I need to put my hair up. I don't think she's got much hair for that. But Paisley really seems to like the goat's milk, the baby, our one year old, she just turned one. So. We've been feeding her cow's milk. I'll milk too. What are you doing? <laughs> Did your milk just let down? All of a sudden you got milk in your teeth. It's not near as messy as cow food is. Goats are funny, you, you can squeeze their udders up higher and get them. Cows really aren't like that. Cows look like you have to. 